for me to be able to be a part of so many people's lives and to see in action how our program really changes their lives and then they have these big bright smiles and they feel accomplished they feel stronger they carry themselves differently that is you know more than a blessing to me that's the absolute privilege of what i get to do every day hey everybody it's jordan here with the perfect workout and today i'm really excited to share this super special feature with one of our very own personal trainers melissa martin from virginia and Melissa and I dive into her own personal experience with slow motion strength training, how it helped her gain a significant amount of muscle in a really short time, and how she's been able to be a really healthy role model for her four children. So stick around for the full discussion and let's dive in. I am in Centerville, Virginia, and I have been training out of the Falls Church studio. I have four kids. Uh, three are in college and one in high school. I was kind of coming to a place in my life where they were kind of going, leaving the nest and getting out on their own. And I took a look at myself and said, what does Melissa want to do? What do I want to do that's going to feel like fulfilling for myself in a career? So fitness and working out was always important to me. When my kids were growing up, we were always in, they were in sports and uh, I always tried to stay fit and I worked with personal trainers myself. So I knew mm -hmm. the impact that they had on my life when I had a really good trainer and how inspiring they could be. And I felt like I wanted to step out of my comfort zone and try to do that uh, for myself. So I came to the perfect workout and I met some really great people that um, helped to train me in the method and then helped to bring me along. And then I started to train at Fair, uh, Falls Church. What do they think about mom um, shifting gears and becoming a personal trainer? Um, that's one of the things that I think has really been the most meaningful to me is that I see my kids looking at me and I obviously as their mom, I want them to be proud of me. And when they see me putting in hard work and when they see me kind of going after something that's important to me and that's meaningful to me, fulfilling to me, it really makes me feel good. They, they look at me and they think it's not just their mom. They see me out there as a trainer and they hear the stories that I talk about, about our clients. And um, it just makes me really feel proud. Uh, I will say when they've spotted me on a couple of the videos on Facebook or Instagram, it's been roasting for days. Oh no! <laughs> Absolutely, but that's awesome. That's the way that they you know relate because they're young adults, teenagers. But they've also all really said how proud they are, <clears throat> which is the reason that, you know, yeah. I'm doing it. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, is, it has been really cool. That's it awesome. Is. And you're totally modeling, you know, um, how important health and fitness is and that this is a, a very holistic way to maintain health, you know, like yeah. at their age, at your age and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My daughter plays basketball in college. <clears throat> my son was an athlete. All my kids are athletic and then they've seen me be active. And then now they're seeing that I'm combining what I want to do as a career with my passion for fitness as well. So yeah, they're seeing it all come together and then seeing me um, really put all of my uh, effort and intention and bring my heart to what I do. And it's been so much more fulfilling. They see for me, to be yeah. doing this than previous other different types of jobs that I've had before. So, so let's talk a little bit about the method um, because I know the first time I ever experienced slow motion strength training, it was like this big aha moment, like game changer. I've been working out the wrong way, like, you know, my whole life. What yeah. was your first experience like? Um, so a long time ago when my kids were younger, I actually had a personal trainer separate from the personal workout that just was doing this super slow method. Mm. And I worked with her for a while. So I kind of became familiar with it and it really worked for me. Like I could really see a huge difference in my muscle strength and, um, in my phys physical body, I gained a lot of muscle and it was, it was the same short in and out, um, go to muscle fatigue, super slow. And so I worked with her for a while and then she went on and then I went on and back into a, a more traditional gym workout where you're in there for a couple of hours and it's a 
a lot of the time of your day. And then once I started to get more back into the workforce, my kids got a little bit older, I didn't have that time. I didn't have time to spend three hours in the gym. So then my physical fitness started to lag. So I always had in my mind that super slow method, how effective it was, how much you could do within just that short amount of time and really get results for myself. Yes. So when I found the perfect workout, I said, this is the place that I want to work. I don't want to just work in another type of gym where I'm just running people through, you know, an hour long uh, workout. I want to really um, be a part of what I knew was a method that would work. I feel yeah. like it's still a little bit of a rare find to come across somebody who's been experienced or, or exposed to our method, you know, in their past, as opposed yeah. to like before coming to the perfect workout. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. You had a, a really solid foundation um, coming into personal training and then coming into our company. How has that, from your experience working with clients, um, helped improve you know, their life? Or what results have you helped clients in the Falls Church experience working with this, this method and working with you? So I would definitely say that because I have um, experienced super slow training myself, I know that feeling of when you just are not sure you can push for one, one more and you need that trainer to encourage you mm -hmm. and say you can do it and hang in there and just keep pushing and you will push yourself. It's not really something that you can always get yourself to that limit on your own. So having someone that's going to encourage you and support you while you're trying to get to that muscle success on each machine is really crucial. And then specifically with clients that I've worked with, they're, um, they each come to our studio and they have a goal in their, in their mind or in their heart. And a lot of times it's how they either saw them, see themselves as they were or where they want to be. And so they're either trying to gain back some of what they've lost or they have a goal of a, something they want to reach towards, like a fitness goal or a level of uh, mobility. Mm -hmm. And especially for a lot of our clients, I feel like for me, their focus is functional strength. Yeah. We have a lot of clients that come in that have some joint issues or have had some uh, kind of complications in, in their past from illnesses. And so their joints are a concern. And just to be able to functionally gain muscle strength I have a client that uh, has been training only virtually since we started virtually, she joined. And um, for her, she used to worry about when she would go somewhere, were there gonna be steps to get in the door? Like she mentioned to me, she had a church service that she wanted to go to at a different church. And she didn't go because she knew that church had four or five steps to get into that front door. So she held herself back because she didn't feel like she could do that. Or when she went to a doctor's appointment, she would have to think about, does the chair have arms? And if I sit down, is the chair too low? Am I going to be able to stand back up? And so the first thing we did was start with chair, get up, get downs. And at first, so first couple sessions, you know, we did three or four. Then the next time we did four or five. And now that's our warm up. That's our warm up. She does two and a half minutes solid of get up, get down. She's right up and in and out of that chair. And she said that when she went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago, she sat down in the chair and she didn't even think anymore. So it's not a thought in her mind. She has that functional strength now. So she's let go of the things that were inhibiting her. And she now has the freedom to not have to overthink, can I go to this place? Can I get in and out okay? Mm -hmm. She has that functional strength. So that to me is a huge um, benefit from our method. Yeah, that's incredible. Training. And like, it's stories like that, that almost bring me to tears, you know, oh because yes. if it's, yes. um, you know, from, from the trainer's perspective, we get into personal training because, you know, we're passionate about health and exercise and we yes. want to help people reach those goals. But sometimes I don't think we realize how impactful this really can be on improving the quality of life yeah. of the individual. And yeah. then from the client's perspective too, 
I think a lot of the times they come in, like you said, with a goal in mind, but they, they don't also recognize all these unexpected things that, that might occur. Yeah. Um, like being able to, to do those things or eliminating chronic pain that they've had for decades. Right. All of these things like are so possible yet we don't necessarily think of that when we first start this type of program. Right. I think for some people, um, it is, it is a surprise to them what, you know, you, you look and you think, okay, it's a gym and I'm going to build muscle, but you don't realize that all the added benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a lot of our clients right now, they're so stressed because of our current situation. So they look for the workouts to relieve that stress but also it helps them sleep better. Mm -hmm. It helps build their immunity. They know these things. And so these are all benefits that maybe we wouldn't have thought of prior to our current you know, COVID situation, but that's really been highlighted. I have clients that are like, I need this because I'm having trouble sleeping, or I need this because I just feel like I'm so stressed, or I have to go to work and I'm exposing myself and I want these workouts, I wanna be healthy, I wanna keep my immunity up. So they know all those extra things that are coming, not just building muscle strength, but all the other things that play a part in what we're offering them. Yeah, and I can't help but share uh, because I remember getting so surprised by being able to sleep better when I first started doing slow motion strength training consistently beforehand, it would take me like an hour at least every night to, you know, calm my mind down and fall asleep. And then once I started training, it was like 10 minutes, my head hit the pillow yeah. and I was out. It's the best sleep you ever get is the night of the workout. Oh. You are done. Um, so you've, you've obviously trained clients for some time in the studio. And I know you've been actively training a lot of clients virtually during this super strange time of sheltering yeah. at home. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about how that process has been going. Cause that's been a really big shift for our trainers as well as our clients. It has. I think that the virtual training was, um, has been a really, um, big learning curve, um, <laughs> coming in. I mean, you have a comfort level when you're in the studio. It's kind of, it becomes your home and your, your home and you're welcoming the clients in. Yeah. Switch that to virtual and they're inviting you into, the, your, into their home. Mm. And it is a very personal thing. These are people that you've seen maybe once or twice a week and you kind of get to know with, within a certain parameter. But when they're inviting you into their home, you see their kids coming in, you see their pets crashing into the, you know, <laughs> into the videos, and you really start to get to know them on a much more personal level. Um, when I first was virtual training with Sandy, the very first time the camera came on and there she was, and you know, we had worked together Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6.30 in the morning every week in Falls Church. And then when she wanted to go virtual, she said, well, we work out 6.30, so is that good? And I said, all right, yep, 6.30 in the morning, turned on the camera, there she was, her bright smiling face. Mm. We did a workout, and then she picked up her iPad, and she took me on a tour around her house and just showed me her house. And that's not something that ever could have happened otherwise. Yeah. That was, it was an unexpected gift from, from this very stressful situation that I feel like you really do get invited into people's lives and into mm -hmm. their homes in a way that we wouldn't have otherwise. And it just deepens the relationship that you have between trainer and client. And you, it's, it's much more human of an yeah. experience for me. And then I think people really need those familiar faces now when we're isolating. So to be able to know that twice a week they're going to see Melissa or they're going to see Biffy or they're going to see Matt, those people that they've known in their regular schedule, to feel that, again, helps us feel a little bit more normal it, rather than so isolated. So yeah. I think that the connections that we had with our clients prior has really uh, helped them and helped me because I enjoy seeing all these familiar faces. I miss all those familiar yeah. faces too. So it's been really, really nice to be able to continue with the virtual training. Yeah. Um, tell me about how you've been able to work around things like injuries or limitations. Because you mentioned earlier, you know, most people that come through our doors have experienced something in the past where we have to work around 
something, something that they're currently battling, whether that's a, a knee problem or a rotator cuff injury or like low back pain. Um, so yeah. how have you been able to work around that? Well, I would say, um, like with Sandy, she has early onset Parkinson's. So sometimes she has days where she experiences more stiffness in her joints than others. And so we both just sort of come at it together as a team. And I say, Sandy, how are you feeling this morning? Are your shoulders feeling okay? If they're feeling fine, we can do an overhead tricep press. And she wants to because she knows that if her joints are able to do this, it's her muscles are gonna get stronger and she can do it on that day. If she's feeling a little stiff and not quite feeling up to it, we switch and use the band instead. And so there, you know, she's not trying to lift her arms, but we're still working the muscles. So we're able to adapt to um, sort of each workout based on her energy level or her level of feeling, you know, stiffness in her joints or not. And she knows that no matter what, by the end of the workout, she feels much stronger and she feels that that has helped her with some of her symptoms that mm. she wants to try to push off as, for as long as possible and stay at the level of activity and uh, energy that she has. So, yeah. and so then it changes. Would, it changes from session to session? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like we work it out each, each time, even each exercise. Sometimes if she's feeling good, we do a wall sit. Sometimes if her uh, hips are feeling a little stiff, we will put a band around her feet and she does knee ups against the wall. So each time we kind of work together to see what, what she is feeling like and what we can do to work around how she's feeling. So, That's and awesome. then on another note about yeah. uh, adapting. Um, so Rick Grimes comes and trains, well, virtually trains, I come to him. <laughs> and he didn't have any hand weights, no dumbbells, no resistance bands. And we thought, okay, how, do, how are we going to do this? Just your body weight, just a yoga mat, and some space. So I said, let's load up a book bag with 10 or 15 pounds of books. And that's what he uses. And we use that. He uses that during the wall sit. He puts it on his back and we do lunges with that 10 pounds. He holds the handle of the book bag and curls to do bicep curls. So we've been able to get really creative and he's been open to just trying just about anything to see how we can come about doing the same exercises, exercising those same muscles, but using either just really, really slow, using your body weight or using that book bag. It's become his best friend twice a week. Yeah. What's been the feedback from clients um, you know, going from machines where you can load quite a bit of weight and it's obvious there's a high intensity level, it's clear, you know, the workout is effective. What's been the feedback clients have had after going from that to doing things like working with their body weight or, you know, reusable totes filled with yeah. books and bricks and wine and all of that? Yeah. Um, so I feel like that we've had to really focus on the slow part. So the machines load the weight, we put the weight on and then the clients, we try to keep them to 10 seconds on the way out, 10 seconds on the way back. But when you're dealing with having to lift a book bag that can only weigh 15 pounds mm -hmm. and maybe your preacher curl would have twice as much weight, you've got to really slow it down. And when you really slow it down, you're having to focus on how you're engaging that muscle which is different than if you're sitting in a machine and you're not quite as conscious. So I think people are realizing that slowing down is a, as much of a part as the weight yeah. towards getting towards muscle success. And then I also think people are surprising themselves and they're, when we all do go back to the studio, their form will have improved so much because when you're holding free weights or a book bag, you have to think about contract your biceps mm -hmm. in a different way than when you're on a machine. And I think once they've learned through this time how to go so slow, how to breathe a little bit better, and then how to engage specific muscles, when we go back to the machines, they're going to be even more efficient and their weights that they're able to do within those two minutes are actually going to go up. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of pleasantly surprised clients when they're I able to transition so. back. 
Yeah, I absolutely think so. I think they're really going to be surprised that they can push themselves a little further maybe than they thought mm -hmm. before. I think that uh, Mike and Catherine Mackinson, they both started training with me um, in the studio in Falls Church. Catherine had been a, a client and then became, started to work with me and then she brought her husband Mike in and they have not missed a session. They love every time we come together and work out virtually. They feel like it's just as good of a workout as what they were getting in the studio. They're happy to be, uh, to have this available to them and then they're gonna be happy to get back. They like the virtual, but yeah, they're ready to get back when we're all open and then when it's a good situation, they're gonna be ready to get back. And so just the consistency that they've had to come and work in the studio and then mm. continue to work together and then we'll move on back into the studio. Yeah, it's gonna be like a flawless transition for them. I think so, yeah. yeah. What do you want people to know about you or training with you? I feel a big sense of the privilege that it is to be able to work with clients. They have a goal or they have a setback or they have a personal um, thought in their mind or in their heart that they want to try to reach and they come to you and they, it's, it's a vulnerable thing to admit, I'm not as strong as I want to be or I'm not as strong as I used to be. And so it takes a lot of personal strength to come in and say, will you help me? And when they decide that, yes, you're going to be a good fit and let's work together, that's a, that's a privilege for me to be able to try to help them on their journey. So for me to be able to be a part of so many people's lives and to see in action how our program really changes their lives, and then they have these big bright smiles and they feel accomplished, they feel stronger, they carry themselves differently. That is, you know, more than a blessing to me. That's the absolute privilege of what I get to do every day.